Alright, so that's what we chose the Vaishi. And this thing, this has been a long time in coming. I'm kind of uh, pondering. I've actually done a couple takes of this, didn't like them. Threw them out, but uh, today I want to sort of do, um, bring together everything I've been thinking about this and project it onto a video log. Because I said a lot of controversial things in my Let's Play of Modern Warfare 2. And I'm going to talk about why this war, these wars in the Middle East, uh, predominantly the war in Afghanistan because the war in Iraq is, is on. They're, they're pretty much wrapping that one up. They're pulling their troops out. Uh, 2012, I believe, is the year is set for us, for uh, U.S. to leave Iraq. So they're wrapping that war up. And, um, but still, uh, Obama, the United States government, and its citizens are a lot, maybe not all of them, but a lot of them that I've talked to seem to claim that the war in Afghanistan must go on. We must win this war. Uh, we have to do this. Uh, we're not. We're not giving up. And um, I can tell you why this war is entirely pointless, and why it was entirely pointless because uh, the lack of knowledge that American citizens seem to have on this war is quite uh, surprising to me. It's it's very surprising, and. Um, Mainly this sort of knowledge uh, deficit comes in the fact that uh, most people don't seem to differentiate between the Taliban and Al-Qaeda. These two, these two separate groups um, that at the time of the war were in Afghanistan and uh, most people can't seem to, to break apart what these two groups represent because um, they're incredibly different. and. Um, as we know, the leader of Al Qaeda, Osama bin Laden, um, attacked and uh, destroyed the Twin Towers during 9/11. And uh, and during that time, he was in Afghanistan and he was hiding with the Taliban. And I'll tell you why. Because basically, Al Qaeda was was you know this terrorist group, and they, people knew that they were kind of being uh, hunted by the United States, and they they didn't really want to have this, this group of terrorists sort of hanging out in their country. They knew that it would probably lead to bad things. That, uh, probably not a good idea to have this guy in their country. But the Taliban harbored Osama bin Laden because the Taliban were, a lot of the Taliban were the Mujahideen, the guys, the, the freedom fighters who fought um, against the Soviets during the Soviet-Afghan War, and they kind of went on after that war and they took power. And as we know, Osama bin Laden helped a lot of the Mujahideen and the Taliban fight the Soviet Union and fight them off their land. So the Taliban kind of owed a debt to Osama bin Laden that they owed him because he had helped them, uh, them fight off the Soviets. And in Afghan culture, they don't take something like that very, they don't take, they, sorry, they take something like that incredibly seriously. They don't just kind of like blow off favors from, from people who have given them, uh, who have helped them a lot. So, I figured the least they could do was harbor Osama bin Laden in Afghanistan for a short period of time because he had helped them fight, uh, the Soviets during, during the war. So, like I said, they owed this kind of debt to Osama bin Laden. And then um, Osama bin Laden then went on to attack the Twin Towers. But um, people seem to think they were like in league with each other, or that they were working together, or something like that. And I'll give you several reasons why they weren't. And um, first reason is because the Taliban is the most inward focusing government on the face of the planet. And I'm pretty sure that they don't even have a foreign policy that this government is only concerned about what goes on inside its own country and isn't concerned about the inner workings of any other countries around it. It just cares about its own problems, its own people, and so on and so forth. They really don't have a reason to attack the United States. They have no motivation for this. And two, um, I, I don't think Osama bin Laden ever let the leader of the Taliban know his plans to attack uh, the Twin Towers, because, um, can you really, like, like, think about what that phone call would be like, you know? Osama bin Laden phones him up and says, you know, uh, buddy, we're gonna attack the Twin Towers, which are gonna lead into a war, and the United States are gonna invade you and remove you from power. Okay, thanks, bye. 
then you know, kind of hung up the phone. Like I really don't think that phone call happened between between them. Because um, what what I think is why Osama bin Laden attacked the uh, Twin Towers. This is my this is my philosophy. Is that after the Soviets have been pushed out of Afghanistan, the uh, there was a large sort of propaganda machine for Al Qaeda, for these sort of extremist Muslim groups, to say, "Look, we're defending our sovereignty from these Western devils. We've already defeated one of the Western powers. We're we're the men. We're we're unstoppable." And then they cut. Then a huge amount of recruits went into Al Qaeda, went went into all these other um, sort of fundamental groups, and then Osama bin Laden, I believe, one two be create that excess and start a war with America and then America would come in and lose that war and then they'd have even another state say look we defeated both Russia and America and both these great western western powers we are just machines we are unfreaking stoppable and they could basically propose anything they wanted and people would follow them because um, they had defeated these two powers and they were so extremely popular in the Muslim world because they had kicked out these these foreign invaders Because it was in you that any Western, when any Western power goes into another country, be it whether it be in Africa or Southeast Asia or the Middle East, they always end up leaving. They always end up leaving this country because there is a really sort of fundamental gap in, in, in sort of thinking of the soldiers and the generals and so on and so forth because when a Western power invades another country, they can always return home, and they will never be followed back. They will not be followed back by these powers who want to, uh, who they invaded. However, when you're invading another country, you know, you're, you're attacking the people, this is their home. This is their home. They have nothing else to do. They have nowhere else to go. They have to fight because this, they, this is all they have. This is their land. They're being invaded. They have nowhere else to go, so they have to fight and fight and fight and fight till the very end. So there's this huge gap in, in differences in thinking and that's why whenever a Western power goes into one of these countries they always end up losing because they always just end up losing because they just can't break the will of these people. They can't break their will to uh, push out a foreign invader. They just can't do it. it I mean you, you can't take a person's country, you can't invade their country and, and expect them to just roll over. So, there's a third reason. Uh, and the third reason why I don't think these two, why the Taliban and Al-Qaeda were working together, or why they weren't working together, is because weeks before the bombs had dropped in Afghanistan, the Taliban government had been talking about turning Osama bin Laden over to the United States. I mean, you guys didn't even wait. You didn't even give them a second chance. You didn't even talk to them and try and say, you know, you, can, you, can you hand this guy over to us? He kind of killed a bunch of our civilians. Like, uh, you just kind of sort of attacked the country and um, went kind of gung-ho on it. I mean, at that point, all bets are off. I mean, like, if you guys had just waited, like, a couple weeks or been diplomatic about it, if you had just waited, may maybe the Taliban would have handed over Osama bin Laden, and you would have had your justice. You would have gotten the guy you've been looking for that killed all these civilians that was responsible for this attack, and you would have had him, and you could have executed him, or whatever it is that the Americans would have done with Osama bin Laden, and there would be no need for this war. Or you could have just said, you know, can you hand over Osama bin Laden? You know, this guy attacked our country. We, we need to bring him to justice. And like I said, the Taliban were already contemplating handing him over, so they probably would. And you have no need for this war. Millions of people, or not many, not millions, but all these people wouldn't be dead. Your soldiers, Afghan civilians, everyone else wouldn't be dead, and you'd have your justice. But yet you wasted a decade nearly trying to hunt this guy down and then making an enemy out of someone who wasn't really your enemy to begin with. I gotta cut this off, but I'll be back um, just in a sec.